Welcome to the fourth lesson on how to create a game using TypeScript and 3.js. In this video, I'll show you how to use the keyboard to move and rotate the player tank. As before, we will use the previous code as a starting point and the source code will be available on the video description. To move the tank, we will use a helper object to keep track of which key is being pressed. For this example, left and right input will rotate the tank and up and down keys will move forward or backwards. Now that we have the type defined, we will create the default state on the player tank class. We need two methods to know when the user presses or releases a key. The first method, handle key down, will update the class to let it know a key is being pressed. Later, we will define handle key up to indicate a key has been released. Notice I'm using the arrow keys, but you can use any key you like. For now, we will keep track of just the up and down keys. To make use of these two functions, we simply subscribe to the global key down and key up events. Now we will override the update function to apply the required transformations depending on which key is pressed. We will start with movement. Remember, the update method was defined on the game entity object. To determine the amount of movement, we will create a vector. This will indicate how much the tank is moving on each direction. We will also define the speed of the tank. To keep it simple, I want the tank to move a total of two map tiles per second. It is very important to remember we created the game as if it was in front of us. If the player presses the up key, the tank should move forward and since the tank is pointing in the negative y-axis, we will set the movement negative. On the other hand, if the player is pressing the down key, the tank is going backwards, or in other words, it will move on the positive y-axis. We can now update the tank position by adding the amount of movement. If we run the game, we notice nothing is happening. This is because we haven't called the update function yet. We will call this function on the game scene just before the render process. The input is now working, but the tank is jumping around and certainly not respecting the two tiles per second speed we define. This is because we are not calling the update function every second, but rather on every render frame. To solve this problem, we must calculate the real speed in terms of each frame. To do so, the update function will receive a parameter that indicates how much time has passed since the last frame was rendered. 3.js clock object has the information we need to do transforms on every frame. To make use of it, Create a new property on the game scene class and access the value by calling getDelta on the clock instance. Now we can change the tank update method to correctly calculate how much movement happens on this specific frame. If we did everything correctly, the tank should now be moving at the desired speed.
we will now apply rotation by using the left and right keys. Let's start by creating a rotation property on the player tank class. The rotation will change when the player presses left or right keys, which we need to track now. The rotation speed is 180 degrees per second, and the direction in which we rotate depends on the key being pressed. Now that we have calculated how much the tank rotates on this frame, we need to apply this to the mesh. Via the method setRotation from axis angle, we indicate we will apply the rotation on the z-axis. Rotation now works as expected, but the movement is not taking the rotation in consideration. If we apply a rotation, the tank no longer moves on the y-axis alone. We have to calculate how much movement is required on each axis based on the current rotation. To obtain how much we have to move on each axis, we need to calculate the sin and cosine of the angle. The resulting value indicates how much of the starting movement is applied on the y and x-axis. If we update the computed movement with the new values, the tank should now behave as expected. This final snippet I'm sharing will not affect the movement of the tank, but it's used to keep the rotation angle between 0 and 360 degrees. This is all for this lesson. I hope I was able to make the concepts covered in this video easier to understand. I would like to add that I know there are many ways to achieve the same results, but in this tutorial I try to focus on easy to understand concepts. In the next class we will see how to create walls that block the player movement. Bye for now and see you in the next video.